All right. So now we have our final of the four part series on pawn breaks. This is a great game by Alakai. So we have a Blumenfeld Gambit. So it looks like it could be an Imzo Indian, right? Or in this case, it would be a Bogo Indian. Let's say knight c3, bishop b4 is an Imzo Indian, right? But then he plays c5. So it becomes, here, it becomes a Benoni. And d5. Now he mixes it up with b5, right? So it could be a regular Benoni. If you take but with b5, it's a Banco Gambit. Are you guys familiar with this one? You're stripping, the, try to strip those pawns, right? So technically we have two breaks, right? No, three breaks technically, because we have C5, that could be considered a break. Usually we're talking about when the pawns are locked, right? Now that's another break. But if you think about it, it could happen in, in different orders, right? So typically I think we would see, you know, D4 and I have six, C4, something like this, C5, D5. So that would be a break as well. This was like a, a sort of, it transposed. So it, it, it looked like it wasn't a break, but the way it went in the game, effectively, you know, he's already played e6, but if he had played it on this move, okay, same difference, right? But that's a break. c5 is a break in a looser scenario it's not locked up. Now it's a little bit locked up, right? d6. But now obviously c4, c5 are very locked up. So we have to create activity, right? And again, your typical uh, Benoni would be takes, takes, d6. So again, we kind of have this hybrid warfare thing where it's, to it's not totally locked up. We have immediate pressure on d5. Right, and then they have to rely on the e pawn and the knight and the queen to guard that. Maybe the bishop too, but we can put a lot of pressure on the d5 pawn, and we already have the half open e file to use. Right, I don't have the arrows today with my phone, but yeah. So we have the we have that, and and uh, we can still strike with b5. But the main idea here is by hitting them with b5, you're guaranteeing some open lines. Right, going to open the b file, a half open b file. You're hitting at the d5 pawns. So you're probably going to have the half open e file. Now, interestingly, the way that Tarash handles this, which which I would love. Is by taking it in this move order, he gets the B pawn. But now we have the half open F file and we have a massive center. So you can already see the compensation. So the thing is, he can't take right away on B5 because then he just loses the D pawn. See, we'll probably just take with the knight. You could even, you could double your pawns if you want, but they're nice and clean. And we just have a massive center coming. I mean, even now you can see big center. We don't even need those, the rigidity there. Nice and fluid, move your knight, play D5 later. And we're just, uh, we're not even down a pawn. We, but the idea is just like in a king's gambit or queen's gambit, we're trying to cast aside the c pawn, get it to come to b5. Yeah, and this is kind of best case scenario to sacrifice because look at what he's traded. He's effectively got punched holes on the f, f7, and d5. So we traded the f7 pawn for the e6 pawn. It doesn't matter that he's taken e6. The e6 pawn regenerates. So effectively, yeah, effectively, there was not really any, nothing's missing on e6. That regenerates. So because the f 7s pawn bond is gone, we have the half open f file. He goes, yeah, the king's going to be a little more open, but we have activity. Plus, because he, he wants to win the pawn, we're able to easily play d5. And now you might say, oh, what about the e6 pawn? Now, if it were on a half open file without the e pawn, that would be weaker. But yeah, theoretically, it's a weakness, but they can't really reach it. And the bishop's already guarding it. They'll be fine. You can easily guard that. So you can already see you're down a pawn, but you have great play. You guys have any questions so far about what's happened with this? A lot of breaks immediately, very aggressive. Just throw everything at him right away. You guys have any questions about the inception of this game? I just have a random question that I, I think, hey, how are you? Hi, everyone. Hey, good. So um, what, what's your question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, hey, um, there's something, I don't know. I kind of remember there's some kind of weird knight maneuver for white where I think that they need to get their knight onto, is it C3 or C2 or something? I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're, no, I think you're talking about um, now, let's say, like I said earlier, let's say that we have something typical where they choose not to take that or um, no, it, it would be like an irregular Benoni, Benoni, let's say. So takes, takes here. And then after, there's some weird lines where white even like sacks to get you form. But let's see, I'm just going to guess what the main line is. I don't really play, but I think it's like something like right here. And then they go, you know, Fionn Keto. Actually, you'll see this in the tall games. Now they can achieve E4. And what often happens is the knight can go to d2 to c4 okay you, is that where you're, you think you're yes. referring to this mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. and the thing is that you'll play a4 now the ideal is to play a4 a5 and squeeze blacks they have to play they have to get uh, take on they'll be able to take on passant there i'll show i'll just give an example again i don't know exact move order but just to give you a sense like let's just say you do something regular like bishop d3 or bishop d2 okay then um 
let's say they go a6 to try and play b5, which is common. Now a4, so you can't do it. I mean, you just take, you would just take it and you can't even take back because the pin on the a flat. So we're stopping that. Now what black should actually do is, is, is play b6, in generally speaking, because if they castle, they're going to get hit with a5. Mm. Uh, again, something similar to this, but it could happen just like this. And now, see, they can't chase that. They have a, they, a de facto weak square on c4 used to be able to possibly be challenged by b5. As long as you can't play b5, that's effectively a weakness, right? So like, let's say, I don't know, bishop g4 or something. And then the idea is, yeah, this is fine. It's just something, right? Actually, yeah. that's, that's a little bit problematic of the e5. But let's, let's give something else. Let's just say, I don't know, we, we want to keep it though. That's interesting, actually. Okay, fine, fine. Maybe we'll, we'll have to deal with that for a second. How about, um, no, I think we're okay, actually. It's just uh, I didn't want to get this version. But let's say you play F3 or something. Just an example. Again, just a sample line. Right. I don't think Mark is going to quite strike at this yet. F5 is a little suspicious and it won't happen yet. You have to be careful with that. So point is that you can't play B5. We're not going to take an off So let's say it goes here. And then we have knight C4. And he still can't go. Yeah, even if, he, yeah, you just take off the But no matter what, you're keeping that knight on C4. They're not going to hit that with a pawn so long as you have the off option. And when the knight's on c4, it's not, it doesn't just look pretty on c4. What else is it doing, uh, you know, really um, concretely? What else does it achieve from c4? Mm. Well, first of all, it is looking at the target on b6, and it is making it harder to play b5 because you just guard that for now. But what else is it doing long term? Long term, he got uh, B6 open. Um, yeah, there's a weakness on There's a hole on B6. What else is the knight looking at? What else is he kind of, well, I'm not going to say too much. Well, he also have the option of E5. Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, I, yeah, I didn't mention that. Yeah, I was, I, wasn't, I, was, I was thinking about D6 also, but E5, maybe uh, F4, E5, sometimes the bishop. Will, well, think about if the bishop makes it to F4. Like again, again, let's just give him a random move. Like uh, I don't know, so what can he do? Maybe he might actually play ninety five. But let's just say he does this. Now with bishop f four, we have pressure on d six. Okay, in which case he would actually have to go ninety five. And in these scenarios, you can take it. You know, you might even want to do this because we still preserve our really nice knight, and we can play d six now whenever we want, and the knight can come in. So just to give you an example, and, and you know, but you probably could do this too. This is good too, but we have a protect. Yeah, you can certainly do this. You have a better bishop, protected past pawn. Again, just a sample line, but this can certainly, uh, this structure can certainly arise. Protected past pawn. We got a, we got a, uh, got him cramped, you know, thorn in his side on a5. He's cramped. He can't, can't break. B6, B5. And even if he achieves it in the future, you know, even if he gets it in, you trade, well, then he's going to have fragmented pawns. He's probably going to just drop his a pawn on the spot. Maybe his C pawn. It's just bad. It's just bad, right? And the bishop can even go to e3 and just target this pawn. Like you can probably get knight a, you know, like knight a4. And yeah, you're probably just going to win that pawn. So anyway, it's bad. Just to say, you know, obviously it's not going to happen just like that, probably, but just to give you an example. But uh, that's really interesting, actually, Nikki, what you're talking about. So it's a very good strategic idea to know. Knight d2 to c4, but you plant it there. It's an artificial support point, what becomes permanent, but by going a4, even though theoretically, um, B5 could be played, but it, but in practice, it's very hard to achieve. Does that make sense? Yes. And this is consistent with some of the, well, we're already getting into some of the plans for white to play, uh, as Lynn said, you want to play for E5 and black wants to get B5 and white wants to go for E5 and put pressure on the, again, it's, it, it, it is a weakness. It's just, can it be reached? Just like E6, as I mentioned, and, and as, as it happened in the game. So we're, we're briefly exploring the Benoni. Um, now, as for the Banco, so the bank, the only difference is we've inserted B5. Now, pure, again, pure, just to look at the pure way it can be carried out, this happened in a different, uh, uh, you know, move order. So like typically, you know, like C4, I think we would just do it right away. Again, I don't play this stuff, but I've seen it enough. C5, D5, B5. And then the idea is, you know, you could let them take, and then you go A6, and you want them to take, and we can, you don't have to take right away, you can go D6. I've seen this, but you can also just take with the bishop. And I, interestingly enough, white will often let the bishops trade and move the king and just like castle by hand. But the point is that you have the open lines to attack on the B file and the C file, or rather the, uh, the B and the A files, see? Uh, so you put a lot of pressure, solidity, and we're going to feel on kettle the bishop. You know? So we're going to put pressure on B2. 
uh, D5 and they come under heat. So basically he's giving away a pawn, but easy development for black and the D5 pawn could come under fire. So that's purely like the move order where you, you typically achieve a bank up. Okay, now here we have the, the mix where it's E6 and B5. So again, we have two different breaks. And as I said, even though white was the one to bypass, it's as if black has struck with E6, same difference, right? So we have two breaks occurring against laying siege to his center and, and to the flank of it. Well, that's important. That's part of the, that's effectively, well, that's directly guarding the center of the C4 pawn. So you're attacking the pawn chain at the base, right? So we're just trying to destroy his center, which, which actually occurs. He doesn't bother holding on to it like B3. Funny enough, I was looking at this yesterday. But then, you know, you can always just trade on C4 now or soon. And there's just a target on C4, which can always be looked at. The knight will end up on B6, so the rook can take the B file with the queen. So it's just bad. So he decides, okay, so Tarash just, and the theory is obviously not, this was like early 1900s. So of course the theory wasn't as developed at that point. I mean, it's still a thing though, but it's, I think it's pretty nice for black. I think it scores, if I recall, I think it scores pretty well. Okay, so you can see white just kind of takes a passive approach with E3, bishop D6, and just like very, you can already see, you know, castles, we have the half open F file for the rook, we have the center, we have the bishops. So I think you guys can sense the compensation, right? The black has for the pawn. Pawn's been cast aside to the right, on the queen side. We have a massive center, bishop pair aiming toward the king. And uh, the center can begin to advance, easy development. What do you guys think? Would you would you be willing to play this position, uh, pawn down with black? Yes. Sure. Yeah, that's about as much compensation as you can get early on for a pawn sack. You know, it's already pretty justified. Uh, yeah, maybe white can play like a. If you're not careful, they'll just like ram the a pawn. You know, a four, a five. You just gonna have to deal with that. But still, it's it's you can. I mean, you can move your bishop in the corner when the rook comes out. You're gonna have to deal with like yeah, a four, a five, a six. Pretty annoying. That's about all white's got though to utilize that extra pawn. So he decides to go b three, and it looks like Fianchetto. Pretty quiet though. See now recovering the e pawn. I mean, of course the knight can attack it, but you would easily. Knight, you know, if knight g5, you'd easily go queen, queen e7 as he did. So no one else is getting that e pawn. But remember, it is theoretically a weakness, right? Not getting there. Okay. Ominous x ray of the queen on the queen. Queen c2, and there's your e5. And you could really feel it now. It's just, yeah, he starts off with this tight center, and then suddenly he's taken over the whole center because of the because of the acceptance of the gambit. Why not, right? I mean, just massive attack coming beautiful knight placement okay now we're going for a mating attack already we're not actually attacking it we're looking at f2 we're not probably not threatening to take it yet because the knight's covering i guess that was his idea to to uh maybe to trade off the bishop at some point but also just passively covering f2 okay well now he has the bishop here that's pretty important because that light squared bishop can be part of a mating attack. It can swing around or maybe it breaks through. Kind of a hint, kind of foreshadowing. Uh, but yeah, this is just a beautiful, it's just a ready, it's probably a winning position. I mean, it's incredibly, I mean, it's just such a passive, such passive defense. See, so he allows h3. Why do you think he would want to go through all the trouble to allow h3 and then have to retreat his knight to h6 and waste all the, quote, apparently waste all the time? Why, why do you think uh, he would allow that? Well, he's creating a permanent weakness on where um like around the castle king hypothetically yeah if you move uh, theoretically if you move any pawn around your king it's a weakness even though it's a loof for the king you don't really need the loof right now but by pushing h3 well h3 becomes uh, attackable right or you see in a lot of scenarios for example let's say you threaten mate on h2 uh you know not now but like in the future let's say you come in you know obviously yeah far away from that but just hypothetically again if you were to just to entertain the idea, if you were to go for the main attack here and they have to block with a G3, they've already played H3, right? And this, so the H, so there's softening in there. The H pawn can no longer guard the G pawn and the H pawn may fall because the G pawn can't guard the H pawn, right? So it's just a softening that occurs around the king with the more pawns you have. And the other thing is, even if you don't have to play G3, we can, uh, you know, attack that. We can threaten bishop takes H3 soon with bishop C8. We can play G5, G4 bayonet attacks. So we're able to pry things open uh, with G5, G4 in the future. 
So there's a lot of stuff. But yeah, certainly Bishop C8, sack, not even threatening a sack, just threatening to win it. But in some cases, sack as well. And here's the other thing. So we provoked the weakness, took a few moves, right? Ends up going here. And the other thing is that he's going to come to F5. And when he's on F5, he can go to H4 and threaten main on G2. Can't block with a knight on G3 because the bishop's going to probably just take it. So you can see this is pretty bad. And combine that with the half open F file, combine that with the big center, which is restricting white's pieces, and combine it with the bishops that are going to swarm and rook lifts and the knight getting to H4 and the queen ominously aiming at the G file, the H file, all swarming around. And our king, you know, play king H8 if you need to. But no one's really reaching the king. Oh, interestingly, he does have some counterplay with queen C4 check, I think, later on, but it, it, it runs out quickly. So you can see you have a safe enough king. And obviously, white does not have any att attacking pieces unless you fall for mate on g7 or something, which we're not going to do. OK. So you play, it gets the king off the file. Here comes the knight. So he's putting up some resistance. And then there's another break. Like I said, it's kind of like it's not our typical breaks like we learned with the pawn chains, where you have a locked up pawn chain and you break, which is kind of more like the Banco position. That would be more, okay, well, I move 21. Let's go back for a second. So when you have it locked up like this, B5 is more like you're breaking when it's locked. But again, in a King's Indian type of thing, you would be totally locked up in the center. But you can see what I mean by hybrid is you're striking across the board and they're not always like totally locked up, you know, and they're going to, and things open quickly. Whereas again, in a French or a King's Indian, remember, it took a while to really open things up. There's the F5 break in the French, the C4, C5 break for white, maybe the F6 break for black, but all that stuff. Actually, interestingly, the, the breaking the head of the pawn chain with F6 opens it more quickly. Then you might get E5 in next. F6 trades E5. Uh, but in the King's Indian, yeah, you get F5 in. F5, F4, it locks it again. And then G5, G4, it takes a long time. So it, it's more, that, as I mentioned in the email, it's more about creating an arena for attack because your rooks need, need break. You need breaks to open up your rooks, right? The rooks come out last. If you don't make a pawn break, those rooks, I mean, you're not going to play like a beginner would often play like H5, rook H6 to get the rook in the game to get taken by the bishop on C1. I mean, yes, you can do that in some advanced ways too, like H5, H4, rook H5, but that's not the main way. You, generally speaking, it's going to be harder to get the rooks in the game that way. You need the breaks. But this one, because you have so many trades and things are not locked up to begin with, like kind of semi-closed, well, now we're blasting it open. Now we have kind of more like a semi-open position. If we if we want to get the break in, uh, but interestingly, you know, it would open, but interestingly, it can close again pretty quickly. Like right now, you think, oh, I'm going to blast it open with D4. But then he plays D3. So he bypasses. So like here we have our break coming. And then he, then he closes. Now it's pretty closed again. So you see how quickly things could change. What if he opted to take and take? Well, now it's a pretty open game when it, maybe E3 happens next and it's completely blown up and all the bish bishops are white. I mean, of course, he'd be very happy with this for black, right? The center is just marching. Now we're, now we're on the, we've moved to the fifth rank from the fifth rank to the fourth rank. And we either keep it there and use it as levers to open up the bishops or we just sit there and make him just torture them and make <laughs> them say, okay, what's going to happen next? Where are you going to go next? Over oh, C8, you take the F file and C, fully open C file. Maybe you squeeze them a little more, but maybe E3. E3 to weaken, uh, for example, let's just say, he does, again, sample move, E3 takes, now you have stuff like this, or you have stuff like this, so you start coming in, oh, yeah, no, no, hold on, hold on, yeah, you're threatening mate, but yeah, when he takes his lateral defense, but it's bad, yeah, there's so much stuff going on, so yeah, and maybe here, and maybe queen takes H3 with the pin, g 3 4 uh, checks and stuff, so anyway, you can see that would be bad, but interestingly, so, you know, but it's not a locked up position right now, right? He still makes a break. It's just different. Because again, if it were like the really locked up games, there might be like a pawn on d4, and then black breaks against that. But here, the only lockup is, is the, the only lockup occurring is e3 and e4. So it is kind of, yeah, it's not, it's not that locked up. That's the point. And it, whereas in the French or King's Indian, there are at least like four pawns involved in that kind of brick wall. Here, you only have two pawns involved, right? Kind of like you play d45 and then c4. Yeah, that's a pawn break, but it's not that locked up yet. But now it could blast open, although since white opts to not take, now white's threatening to take and open up the bishop against the queen, discovered attack. Now we close it with d3, and we just, and there's your check, and he moves. But now we just have a bind on it. You can sense that. I mean, this has got to be, a, again, if you, I'm sure stock, it's got to be a winning position strategically. Yeah, minus eight. <laughs> it's not over yet, but, it, but he just has stuff coming. So, yeah, it's from a human perspective and a computer perspective, 
concrete moves, but from a human perspective, intuitively, I think you guys can feel that this is pretty hard to defend. And what, he's just down the B pawn, right? He just got his B pawn for all that. It's not worth the trouble, right? Uh -uh. Or too much trouble. Um, so bishop B2, knight G3 check. Okay, now it gets tactical. Um, does he take? He does not. Okay, now this is a just purely tactical line. Why do you think white did not take the knight? What's going to happen after he takes and queen takes g3? Why is it that he can't defend there? The, the rook would just come right down. I mean, yeah. Yeah, next. Next, it opens up our rook, which is very right. useful. It affects the tack. It, it affects the tactical possibility. Yeah, it affects the tactical tactical possibilities. So now, if the pawn takes and the queen takes, or the queen, or the queen could just go right yeah, there. Yeah, they threaten right. mate. Okay, now why is it that he actually? Why is it? Okay, I got it. Why is it that he actually achieves it though? Uh, so what's the only move to not get mated right away? Well, I mean, you could play queen g8 check. <laughs> yeah, that's open. So what's the only move to not get mated without losing the queen? To not get mated. Yeah, we have the threat against the knight. We have the battery, right? The rocket the queen aiming in. Oh, we're also threatening the rook on e1, which I'm focusing more on taking with mate. But rook takes uh, e1 check, knight blocks, and take with mate because the bishop's taking away the h2 square so much for the luft on h2 right so anyway um or luft is luft thanks um yeah so it's it's tough but again in terms of stopping mate like it's completely winning no matter what uh knight uh wait not f2 or not f1 matt two oh. not white going not f2 what is what? What does black do then? What's your immediate threat? Again, I mean, it holds off I'll the take the knight, I mean, it's, a four, it's a fork mate threat. He's forking mate in two directions. I mean, it's game over. But like, let's say he goes knight f2 and we take with mate. Where's our mate? Oh, I forgot the bishop. Sorry. Oh, okay, fine. He could throw it. Oh, yeah, he could throw a bishop takes g7 check too, I guess. But they might throw us off a little bit. But that's not, anyway, it's not going to last long. But yeah. Knight f2, you just take h2 with mate. What about knight f1 then? I think that's the, that's the only move that makes any sense, or it seems to make sense, because it covers h2, and if the queen takes e1, hey, at least it's not with check. I mean, no matter what you lose, it's, he didn't take because it's lost in every line, but, not, but specifically the main line would be knight f1, and then what do we do after that? You just take the rook. Better. Remember when you're, looking, when you're looking for a, when you're solving like a puzzle, this has become a puzzle, right? Because if pieces are swarming, we have an exposed king, loose pieces, but especially the exposed king. It's like a puzzle every move. You got to think, treat it like a puzzle. You take the knight with check. You see it now, Matt? Knight f1, rook takes knight check. Visualize that. How's that? How's the, how does taking with check change things? He has to take back. Oh, the rook. The oh no, we don't gone. get the rook, we don't get the rook anymore. Yeah, okay. we don't get the rook anymore. We don't care check and that removes the defender so we achieve our mate too mm -hmm. uh, yeah so you saw that one so that means that he simply just he simply can't take that means uh then he moves the king okay we're getting a tempo on the queen not no big deal she wants to take the a pawn that's okay then we throw in this check so um what am I doing there with the arrow? <laughs> no, I think that's explaining after that's explaining after the fact what we just looked at. They had taken um, queen in. That's an interesting move. Make our own loop because we see now. Look, there bec it becomes a risk, right? Because the queen is swarming. Uh, if we start lifting our rooks, she might have some mating ideas. Probably not, but hey, just to be careful. But also, it keeps the knight away from g4. Just take the knight if it wants to come there. So no f3, no g4. It can go rook takes e2 if they want. We'll take back. That's fine. Kick the knight, take f2, game over. So we really restricted them. There are no threats against g7. There are no threats with the queen. Watch out for the d6 bishop, maybe. That's about it. So it's game. Let's finish him off. Take a b6. Oh, here we come again. Check. 
I think he comes back again, just keeps messing with it. So check, see if he wants to take it. Does not. Take it. Here we go again. Return. So it really didn't matter. He might be gaining time on the clock, though. So he gained, let's see, what, what move is it? Yeah, it's move 32. So if it's like a move 40 thing, he gained, he gained some moves. So he's moving closer to move 40 to gain an hour or whatever he would gain. Okay, here comes that one. Now we're, now we're just cashing in. See? If we want to, we can cash in here by getting the rook with the knight, which we do. Now it's not just to take the exchange though, it's removing a key defender, right? Yeah. Now we only have one, we only have the knight helping out on F2. Okay, we want H3, as we talked about earlier. It's a different angle, different way of getting there. And we do it anyway. Okay, this is the finish. I don't know if he resigned now or in a minute. Why did he uh, do this? Why is this decisive? Well, we threatened mate on G2, but let's say he takes it. We can find it. Takes it and now in every movie you should be looking at your most forcing moves, right? We talk about look at look at checks, captures, and threats. So first move, well, there was no good check. So we look at a capture. On the second move, same thing. Visualize them taking. Same thing. Do you have any checks, captures, or threats? The okay. queen just takes G2. After white takes. You imagine okay. white's coming. White takes I mean, you can you can visualize it from here. Okay, I'm let's making, see. I'm just this making the first. Issue. Yeah, white white's gonna white's taking first. We want to do that, yeah, but white's after white takes are after oh. white takes. I mean I can put it here if you want. But All I can see is queen h4. That's the only thread I see. But similar. I, okay. Similar, but more decisive, probably. Okay. Well, you, yeah, you, if he you, takes you, then the what? I, I'm, I'm, looking. I'm looking. It's all your force. <laughs> More forcing. Hmm. I mean, bring in more force. Okay, so similar, maybe it's similar takes, in terms of how takes. forcing it is. Uh, um, so maybe so rook bishop up. takes. Yeah, bishop takes. G pawn takes. Uh, Lynn. Oh, and we'll come back to you. I think you saw something, Nikki. Uh, but Lynn, you saw something else too. Uh, I'm After still not. Okay, but visualize that. So you're visualizing again in terms of like you know, like we talked about which pawn, like where you're punching a hole. It's kind of like I talked about earlier, where the D pawn takes the E pawn. The F pawn takes back. So, for example, when we take the H pawn, de facto, we're not really you are taking the G pawn, not the H pawn. See what I mean? Because it's 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 spawning back on H three, right? Bishop takes H three, G takes H three. So it's interesting when you think about it. Oh, I'm taking the H pawn. Well, if he takes back, you're really taking the G pawn after after it's done. You see what I mean? So yeah. maybe maybe, maybe. Uh, the, the rook the just comes root. down and take um, F two. So some rook move, first. yeah, yeah, or something for any, some rook move. So we've removed the G pawn, which means the H pawn is up. You've uprooted that G pawn, so the H pawn's loose. Now the F pawn's a target. The H pawn's a target. Now if you take F two, let's anticipate what is White's, you know, only reasonable reply to that. Knight takes rook. Knight, knight takes. Yeah, can we come in there? Can we do anything else? Are we ready to take that or no? You got nothing to take it with yet. Yeah, certainly. The, rook. the problem is we don't have our queen g3 idea. No, we don't. It, but we have that. Yeah, let's keep that in, like in store. Either it's, it's a candidate move. But if it doesn't work, work now, we'll keep it in mind. Sure, for sure we will. What's another way? Rook another way to oh, oh, Nikki, oh, bishop, you, 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 bishop. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki, something. Bring your bishop. I heard. I heard Nikki say it. Rook f3. Definitely. Because again, we've removed the g pawn, which means we have a hole on f3 now. Because you moved the e pawn, you. They move the e pawn to e3, no more g pawn. F3 becomes a glaring weakness. See? Yeah. So imagine it from here. You say, I want, remember, when you're envisioning, the way to visualize is obviously a bishop will be gone and the g pawn will be gone after this. So you visualize like that. You say, oh, well, if the g pawn's gone, well, for sure I want to attack the h pawn, but I can also utilize the, F, the f3 square. Oh, perfect. I utilize the f3 square simultaneously. Attack well right after that attacking the H pawn and I have a vicious combo of a queen, a queen, a rook, and a bishop swarming and all they got is a knight nearby and obviously the knight's gonna can't cover everything and the D one knight he can only cover a F two 
The other uh, yeah. cover h2, but we're going to overwhelm it because he's, he's going to have to block at some point. But we got the bishop hitting. So that's game. Did he resign? I think he might have. Did he do this? No, he did play. Yeah, he did play on him. It's lost. But keep in mind that, no, you have to. That's the thing. You have to look at this move. It's crazy. I mean, no, it doesn't do anything. But no, it's interesting because he's trying to lure you away. What's the point? What if you take with your g-pawn? What is white trying to do? It's a tricky take idea. your rook. So he's, so he's fork, he's quote, for, he is technically forking you. Now, of course, you can take that piece, but he's messing with you a little bit. Wait, what are we at right now? One, two, three, four. They have one, two. They have one, two, three, four, five. So they have like uh, two, two pieces for a rook, which is not that bad for white, ex except for the fact that the pieces are doing nothing. So he just like throws a desk. It's kind of a desk, well, a desperation, let's say. But he's trying to swindle you, you know? Mm -hmm. so that's that? the thing. So, oh, move 39. Move. Yeah. Like you said, that. time pressure. He's on move 39. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so maybe he has like a minute. Oh, who knows? But let's say he's down. I mean, it's such a complicated game. He probably spent some time. So let's say he's down to a minute or two. He's like, oh, man, you just threw me off right there. Um, oh, is it showing you all the moves? Yeah, it's on the bottom. It's, yeah. it's blocked by my, by my toolbar thing. But if I go here, you can't see it, right? No, I could, I could see the moves. I just saw it. Wait, do you see my do you see my thing move, moving up and down here? Yes. No? Yes. Uh, you can see it. So now, now, and I go up to the top. Is it, can you still see it or no? Um, if you go to the top, it has, it says the center play alicon. Yeah, it. I still see. Do you guys see that? It. No. If I go up, so right now when I go up to the top, are you seeing? Uh, D four knight f six knight f three and then. But I mean, are are you seeing the the move that he did with bishop f six right now or no? No. Oh, that's not okay. I guess it's like, I guess it's like showing more for you than for me somehow. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, he does take it. So he throws him off, and now when the knight takes, I assume yeah, the knight takes the pawn. Of course, we take it with check. Well, yeah, pretty much of course because because we we're not losing the rook anyway. We have this move. And I think that's that's done. No, I'm pretty sure he resigned. Uh, he must have resigned here. Let me double check. Do you see where it says resigns? Yeah, yeah, it was here. Because now he's getting mated. Well, now if the king goes to g1, uh, is it the same thing? I think I think we still do that. We still drop that queen in there. And there's no way. There's only this move. Okay, where he's only going to last for so long here. Now we can. Oh, oh, that pawn's hanging. Be careful. But there's no. You can see that there's no follow up. Very important. Just stop. You know. No more checks, right? Interestingly, if you take with the bishop, there is another check. He's just going to keep bothering you as much as he can. Yes. Uh, not that move. Uh, I mean, okay, look, he's got to run out of steam soon. Okay, okay, fine. Now, if he goes to d6, he gets taken by the she gets taken by the bishop. Okay, he's going to run out. But yeah, this is just keep it simple. Just take with the pawn. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, because no, because then that's the last check. Because the bishop's that. Yeah, there are no more light square checks anyway. You can give away the queen, but it came over. So yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, so you begin with how many pawn breaks were there? But they were different. They were kind of like looser pawn breaks. Again, they weren't like pawn. It just shows you different forms of pawn breaks, right? They weren't the type. They weren't those types of pawn breaks. Uh, fully locked up, semi locked up, right? Hardly locked up at all in some cases. Like right here, you know, this not you know d five here. Like no, no one's really locked up on d five. Until you play, uh, you know, until you trade and play d6, but then there's no more break right there, right? This is the break, but it's still, it's still not totally locked, right? So very different. And now there, there's not even an option for pawn breaks. Pretty, it's getting, uh, there's no more options for pawn breaks. So, uh, I mean, a6 is a break, I guess. A6 is breaking against that. Point. It's kind of like we looked at the other day with h5 in the first French game. Remember we hit him with h5. Nothing was locked up. So again, there are different forms of breaks. Just strike. It's a pawn striking at a pawn. But again, like pawn, well, some people call it pawn levers or levers, right? Where the pawns yeah. are locked up. That's like the lever. I mean, so I don't know in terms of terminology, I guess hyper, uh, theoretically, I guess you'd call that a pawn lever where they, where they are locked up. I don't know. I just call them pawn breaks. That's how I've heard it, generally speaking. I guess a lever is like under the umbrella of pawn breaks, right? So I, for, So for instance, like this, Again, it would be more like a French, that would be a lever, or B5 would be more of a lever because the C pawns were locked up. 
this is just a break, I guess you can say. Because again, if the pawn are on D4, six, uh, I guess you can call that, yeah, because the, the E pawns are locked up. I guess you can call that 11. And then we bypass it, just like in the King's Indian, you play F5 and you play F4. Bypass now becomes locked again. And then suddenly we just cut, now whenever you have a situation like this, kind of like, again, kind of like in the French, where I play E45, those pawns that are locked up they, in the given, gaining space, they cut the board in half. So now we already have what we need. And that's why, okay, was this the position where it says completely winning? Now it says minus 10. Yeah, the computer agrees. Just, just complete, like, onslaught, just complete route. Uh, because, yeah, he's locked out. Like, all they have is the rook and the knight nearby. And the knight actually become, they both become targets in the line where the pawn take. And it's, that's, a, that's a mating line. In this line, it's just too much. Too many, too many tactics available. Just I think someone on my level would play something like knight h4 or something instead. Like with that instead, instead of knight any, g3. Yeah. I don't know if I would find something that like that. That would still probably be good. But then there would be like uh, maybe rook g1. Okay. And then rook g1 would slow you down, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe sort of holds on. It might be uh, yeah. And then suddenly he's. Uh, uh, you almost have something like rook saxon but then but see the, the now you don't have they have more resources yeah they could go knight f1 now because you don't have the rook sack on there well, but they so probably annoying. have something like this i mean you know it's feeble it's certainly feeble but like you know but no, it's not as good as the other one <laughs> the other way yeah, Obviously. yeah way better so then as for breaks are there any more i think there was another break right maybe one more uh okay well he gets he just like this is like a pawn break striking at a pawn i don't know but but the other one, there are really a lot of counter pawn breaks, like in the third one. And then it's just done. That's a pretty cool move, though. But then he finally resigns now because he sees the, he sees the writing on the wall there. It's mate in a few. So, yeah, you guys have any questions about that one? That's a good game. Yeah. No, no questions. Oh, it's a famous game. Yeah. Has anyone seen this game? It's a famous game by Alakai. It's pretty complicated, though. So it's, it's not going to be like uh, a primary game that you'll learn when you learn like famous chess games. You know, this is kind of like, it's a more advanced game to learn, right? So first you'll learn the class, like 10 classics or whatever. Yeah. So what do you guys think? It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's just like a straightforward attack. And white was totally passive, like you said. Yep. Okay, now the next one. So now we have the tall, two tall games, I think it was. Talls, okay, this is, don't look at what it is. <laughs> okay, you guys probably already saw the name of it. Wait, so right now you can only see, okay, how deep are you? You're seeing the board and like a few moves below that? Yes, I see E4, E6, D4, D5, E5, C5. Uh, okay, you're seeing the same thing. I'm, yeah, okay. I guess you're pretty much seeing what I'm seeing. It's just part of my screen is locked on the phone. So on the phone this time. So wait a second. No, I'm on the first one. Sorry. That was that. Well, there you go. Just, just since we talked about it. So this is your more classic break. You know, everything's locked up and that begins to open things. But it's not going to open up the whole game because even after that happens, then you're going to have the, e, the E5, E6 lockup, which was similar to the, the E3, E4 lockup on the other side. And you still have more stuff to open up, right? But in the other one, there was only one thing lockup. It's just more, it's just a break and more of a really closed position. Just that's what I'm saying. It's just there are different types of positions. Wait, why? I clicked on this one. Why is it done? I'm going to this game, and it doesn't want to bring me there. There we go. Okay. So C4, C5. And there, this is your typical Benoni, right? E6, nice C3, takes, takes, and D6. So now the old school is kind of like Bishop E7, but the new school, I guess, more mo like well, in the last half, well, not even half century. Now it's much more because we're in, 2023 so let's say the last 70 years or more is uh Fionn Kettwing the bishop so kind of similar to a king's indian but in a king's indian the pawn wouldn't be on c5 it would be on e5 and there'd probably be there would be like a pawn chain here so it's again it's not as close as a king's indian and as you said earlier lynn there could be e5 break for white maybe even with a lot of times very aggressive options to have the pawn in front of the knight pretty much ensuring or making it very hard to stop the e5 break now here it's harder to achieve that break and i'm always afraid of that e5 break it's annoying but look at, but that's where i think he's gonna i think he pins the knight if i recall i think this is does he pin the knight no he doesn't he's oh he does the thing you're talking about but the knight, the knight well that's where the knight wants to reroute to c4 and not oh, okay. get taken and still support it in conjunction with like rookie one or queen mm -hmm. queen over f4 e5 well queen over will get hit by rookie eight. but yeah bring all those force behind e5 so sometimes, I think in one of the games, they go bishop g4. 
to not a6. Now he can go to c7 and support his b5 push. He can also go to b4, which he actually does in this game because it worked out for him. Now, what you wonder is, okay, why doesn't he go to um, b1? Uh, that's the more, more typical thing to do. That's uh, interesting as to why he didn't do that. Maybe a tactical reason, I don't see it yet. But yeah, he comes Okay, in. crazy question. I know that you're gonna probably think this is silly, but okay, so it's, it's okay. Just, I mean, if Bishop takes Knight there, it's just bad, right? Because even though it doubles Black's pawns, he has to open B file and you have the Bishop here. So it's really, it's really, bad move to bishop no, it's, actually fun. it's actually funny you mentioned that because one of my students the other day we were working through a chess kid puzzle she wants to like she's moving up to like king 30 or whatever because like, nice. the king something. so and she showed me that so there are ideas of like uh rupturing a pawn structure and it's like no this is not a good example of doing okay. that yeah it gives the bishop air. not to say you can't do it though so like uh. you think about it, like like because that would then uh move it would take away the option to b5 which would make knight c4 easier but then again maybe they go a5 and bishop a6 and stop knight c4 make it harder to achieve knight c4 anyway and that bishop even though it doesn't look like a great bishop i mean it is looking he's a great bishop it, yeah i mean and, and think about if i mean it's not the greatest bishop i probably the bishop the other bishop on e3 or g5 would be doing more or even mm -hmm. b2. Okay. Um, yeah but the bishop not bad at all now so you could totally do it if you wanted to but I think black would gain a lot. It wouldn't, he probably wouldn't get any edge, right? Because it would be highly right. imbalanced. Black would have like rook b8. No, so it's a great question. Black would have maybe like a5, bishop a6 options. The bishop pair looks pretty good. And again, see, we have locked up d, we have one locked up pawn. Just like if you play d45, just like if you play e45. Although keep in mind, if you play e45, it's easier to break. If you play d4 like a scotch, queen's behind it. If you play d4, d5, it's very hard to achieve the break e4 because there's nothing guarding e4. And then knight will go to f6, bishop f5, making you just, if you can imagine that. That's why I have to do d4, d5. It's so common to do a queen's gambit, c4, because that's the natural break against the pawn. It's easier to achieve. And you know you can get the pawn back if you want. It's not even like risky to do. But uh, yeah, here, d4, d5, so uh, rather d5, d6, not that locked up. Similarly, it's just that white has moved into black space, but then white could become uh, overextended, and we're going to target it. So you can see, though, there's a lot of play here. What I'm getting at is it's not that locked up. So we can see the bishop pair becoming very active. Imagine you play a5, bishop a6 after your trade you mentioned. Then the other bishop's obviously fine on g7, uh, looking at c3 and b2, rook comes to b8 to enhance the intersect, enhance the attack of the intersection mm -hmm. against b2. So, so yeah, it could get very strong. So great question. Um, now, I don't know why he didn't go to b1. Um, I wonder if this is, book. have been played before? Let's see, is this book? Probably not, but you never know. Let's see when when does it get out of book? Bishop. Um, nobody played knight. B yeah, knight b4 was a bit of a cryptic move because again, I would figure. I want to check. I'm curious. Look, I I would probably go bit unless there's something wrong with it. I would go bishop b1. Here. It says bishop e2 as well, but, and he's doing well. What about bishop b1? It's still fine. It's slight. No, it's about the same evaluation actually. But I would want to do that and then make it look like oh, you're not doing anything with the knight move. Hmm. I guess sort of like provocative. I don't know. Hard to say. Um, but he comes in here. No, because he has to go back. He does go back. And then, uh, but yeah, certainly the main thing that people have done is knight c7. Although I think it was like a win. I think it was like a win for white, maybe a draw in one of them. You guys recall? A3, knight back. I mean, I guess he's provoking a b3 weakness. Here's a weakness on b3 square because the a pawn can't guard it. Knight goes back c7, puts some pressure on d5. Get ready for b5. You can go a6, but remember, anytime you go a6, white will go a4. So, just as an example, a6, a4. Again, we're not ready for b5, so you should go b6. Why? Because now after a5, you can bypass. Or, so, the difference is that if you if you just do something random, there's your a5 again, squeezing blacks. Black just has a really bad position. Can't you can't move the b pawn even if you get again? Remember, even if you get it in, let's say you know. Just to sample line again, like let's say something like this happens. Well, that's a pretty bad, it's pretty bad structure. I mean, there's a B3 pawn to attack, but look, yeah, A6 pawn's very weak. Um, yeah, it's just fragmented pawns. So not ideal, right? Yeah, the B pawn could be attacked, but it's still, it's not, it's probably not worth it. But also the knight will go to C4. So for example, you just do this, and there's that idea again. Now it's really hard to achieve B5. Take on Passant with the pawn, you know, it's hard to hold that. It's just fragmentation. So point is, when you see this, uh, 
you go B, oh, that's actually what happened. <laughs> so he didn't go for A6, he's going for B5. After A4, he knows not to go A6 because A5, which is exactly why he goes B6. That's what I'm talking about. And then he'll go A6, if I recall, unless he just, unless something else happens, which looks like here. Nope, he doesn't. But now he can certainly uh, go for B5. He could do B5 right now if he wants. But he has other things in mind, I guess. But remember, at a moment's notice, he can go B5. Just keep in mind, it'll it'll unleash White's rook. But he could do whatever he wants, right? Okay, queen here, three. Kind of funny is what I showed, like what we looked at earlier. Now, not H5. Here, he begins with his his I call this flash attack, because you can start to see those dark squares are going to come under a lot of pressure. So interestingly, he has the option for a break, but he doesn't go after that one. But here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This kind of hybrid stuff where you play F5. It's not your typical, like, again, if this were a King's Indian, you'd already have this locked up, going to E5, then you go F5. But here, it's like, are you justified? You're not sure, right? But we have pressure against D4, and he just senses, like, you know, takes, takes. That's a ton of activity, and you can't even move the bishop because you lose the rook. So, yeah, massive amount of activity. Remember, the D-pawn got weak. It separated. So we could bring the knight back, hit that D-pawn. Uh, you got your bishop d4 check coming of some mating ideas and all that. Yeah, it's bad. E file control. You don't even, but like we don't even bother with the b5 break unless we really want to because the rook opens up, but we could. We certainly could play b5, b4, c4. Oh, that's not what happened. Uh, he went here. Then he pushes. So now he logs. See, it's just like the other game, like Alakine. He decided he bypasses. Now it's more closed. Okay, now white bypasses and we could take Ampassan if we want, but he doesn't. Because what is what what is why do you think he doesn't take and he goes for this? What's his dom what what kind of domination is he aiming for here? He's sitting right there. Um and he would just get taken right back and maybe the knight would take him back. If you go where to E3? Well, if he took Alphonsant, then the knight would be sitting oh, right there. I mean, right. you know, the knight at F1, so that's probably why he didn't. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's kind of, you know, you already have a nice wedge in there with your pawn. He goes G4, you take on Passat, you give away that space advantage that you've gained. Mm -hmm. Dark square control, and they take, um, you know what, he probably even takes with the pawn. And just, there's nothing really going on here. Like, this is, this is kind of isolated. I mean, like an isolated attack, uh, rather than an isolated pawn, but like, the bishop itself is sort of isolated out there. It's not really going to coordinate, that's what I mean. It's, it's kind of an uncoordinated situation. And probably get away with taking this one, actually. That's more effective than bishop h3. There's no follow-up for black here. No queen g5 available, no queen h4. That's the thing, actually, interestingly, if you had taken with the pawn, of the knight, rather. Now we can start looking at here with the queen later. You might get in here. I mean, probably to trade knights. But, yeah, it's just, just keep your pawns together for white, probably. But now that he does this, check. What I'm what also what which squares is black going after in general? Which squares is black dominating? Uh G3. Well not G3. Yeah, that's a check. At least, um, white, at least he's taking it away from white. He might use it. G3, H4. Um Bishop comes in. Bishop on D4, what's it doing? He's blocking. He's he's keeping him restricted. Yeah, the on the dark corner. squares. On dark squares, that's what I'm getting right. You got a bishop on dark squares. It's embedded there, like an outpost. It's an outpost guarded by the pawn c5, and it's usually a knight outpost. That's a bishop outpost, though, right? And mm -hmm. it's it's made possible by the c pawn, which guards it. Weak square on d4. Pawn has moved to c4. Has moved to e4, right? Weak d4 square. And again, this look exploitable earlier, but it became exploitable. And the f4 pawn. It's on a dark square. It's attacking dark squares, and it doesn't allow a knight or bishop to come in. But you have to be confident about that because you have to know. Because look, when you move your, if you have to retreat your knight right now, so your knight's hanging on h5. You have to be confident here. If you have to retreat your knight, they're going to take the f pawn. Uh oh! Now everything is kind of so most of that's going away. You just lost your pawn, and white didn't even have to trade off the g pawn or anything. So <laughs> you have to be confident that this is going to work. No, yeah. what's going on? Well, that's a tempo though. That's a tempo. Mm -hmm. We can go an IG3 check if we need to also. So we're gaining time. So obviously, again, when he played F4, he sees, you know, and especially when he when he uh, doesn't take on Passant, 
because he knows his knight and pawn are gonna be hanging. He's gonna play f4 to give him a pawn for free, for, you know, for nothing there. So now we, we have oh now he's look at that. First he, look at this initiative. It's a flash, that's what I'm saying, it's a flash attack. So let's go back. So you got f5, all of a sudden, starting with knight h5, f5, f4, then we have check. Queen and attacks the rook, queen attacks the knight, queen takes pawn. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was attacking the knight because the rook was blocking the bishop. Now it's not actually attacking the knight. It seems that white is holding on to that. But he's just demolishing. He's just demolishing his position. Yeah. Right. He's in. Now, again, the, the, um, the knight is offered, but <laughs> it's not a big deal, I think. Uh, white keeps coming in. Well, what is white? What is black going to do? If did he take? He did not take. He went to attack. He went for a counterattack. But if he were to take on h5, what would black do? Looks like he has a pretty straight, straightforward way to keep attacking. Uh, he would just move his queen, move the queen, and take. No, he wouldn't do that. I'm sorry. Let's use. Let's do. It's, it actually reminds me of the last game where we were infiltrating on the same weak squares. Remember? Oh yeah, he will probably move the e rook, a, a rook lift. Oh yeah, oh, I didn't think about that yet. Yeah, yeah, it will take a little while though. It'll, It'll take, take a little while, while but what I mean. first, Yeah, no, that's a, that's in the cards. But before we do that, but remember, but remember, you're right. Remember the f three. Remember Nikki last time he did rook f three. Mm -hmm. This time the queen's on f three, so we 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 embed our bishop on h3 and that looks bad what's our what's our piece count one two three four five so we're up a pawn and we just have uh what are we we just down a bishop so we have like a pawn for bishop but also well we're, we're getting the rook if we want to and yeah he's all tied up and a lot of pressure. Rook and bishop right sorry what rook mm -hmm. and bishop oh if the queen yeah if the bishop's hanging on d3 like if you take and the queen has to take then yeah. we get that, and then we're up in exchange after that, and upon at least, yeah. Uh, but the rook on a two doesn't bode well. The bishop neither does the bishop on c one. It's just junk, absolute <laughs> junk, junk right in there. So uh, what does he do? Yeah, that's just log. Well, the computer evaluation says uh, minus one. But that's good enough. I mean, but do I miss something even better? So in this <laughs> position, I mean. It doesn't have to be like completely like minus five. It's just point is he's justified in sacking the piece. Oh, it actually says he should do this move. Interesting. What is going on? So, so why couldn't, what is going on? I'm confused. Why couldn't the rook take? If the pawn takes, do we have like what pawn push? That's pretty bad. And then if the rook takes, we have like a knight check. No, we take with check. Um, the rook would go back, I assume. And then we have something vicious. Come. That's interesting. Right. It's, it doesn't look as decisive. It's like seems slow, right? Yeah. But it, it, this to the human eye, this looks less decisive for sure. And then, yeah, like why is this winning so much? That's curious. I'm curious. Let's see real quick. What is this? Is it F3 again? Because the thing is, the bishop guards F1. I don't know. I mean, it's a good attack, but I, I think the way I I agree with Tall, I think he did just fine. Um, he took. See, the computer said even interestingly, but then, and he goes here. Okay. And he comes back, then he doesn't, wait, what? Oh, that's what happened. That's actually what, sorry, that's actually, yeah, that's actually what happened in the game. The knight goes here, it's not a sideline, and then, and then knight goes back, and then he does not. So rather than go for, oh, look at this guy, he's bold. Of course, he's tall. Rather mm -hmm. than just go for a draw, he's like, look, the computer likes, computer likes white at that point. But, wait, why isn't it moving? But he sacks, he sacks his queen for glory. He wants the victory. <laughs> and well, now we have like knight check. So what's our piece count? We got one, two. Is it just like a piece for a queen? It's a piece and some pawns. How many pawns we have? Like two? It's, uh, so it's five for nine. A piece and two pawns for the queen, right? So plus four. Yeah, it's a plus four up there on the right. Yeah, you see on the bottom right, it says knight two pawns. So it just doesn't. Oh, yeah. Right? We don't have to add up all the pieces. We just cancel out, but. Uh, so then we, okay, nice and calm, bring our rook over. It's just like a sustained attack. So it's almost a sort of a positional sacrifice, just a sustained attack. He's not mating him now. Rook over. Why not Lin's move? What's oh, Lin's I guess move? there's nowhere to go from there. What's Lin's move? Darn. I like the rook lift. I guess it's too slow. 
Uh -huh. It's too slow, but at least it, it helps you to move your pieces into place. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes you don't have enough and you got to take that extra time to set up your infantry. <laughs> the thing is, uh, Lynn, yeah, the thing is, if you go up, we can't go anywhere from there. But now you see you're in the right place, right? Because now there's like, he's looking at night check stuff. And if the rook takes, he's going to unleash our rook on the F file, which is easier to access. Uh -huh. Well, now yeah. you can't do it because the queen is gone. Right, and, and you can shove the pawn to F3. You can support the F3 push. Yeah. I mean, it's easier said than done, but look at, but look at the position. Um, you know, there's, there's just not much going on for white here. So black has, if nothing else, this massive initiative, lots of squares to harvest on that king side. Now mm -hmm. look, at, look at black's pieces. I mean, they're really solid, beautifully coordinated. Uh, no more worries about that knight on H5 when it was initially attacked. No one touched that knight. Always has our knight G3 option, which he does. And so now you can see tactically that works out for us. Well, it's a fork. So he probably has to sack the exchange. No, he doesn't. But then we just start winning material, looks like. But the thing is, um, yeah, yeah, look, because we can trade, trade. Okay, you guys try to find the, now we're starting to gain material back. Because it's such a strong position. So much coordination, exposed king, weak squares. That bishop, look at that bishop on d4. So look at that job he's doing. Okay, so now what's going to happen after this? Why did he take the rook? What's the justification? I assume the king takes back, right? Now, we'll try to visualize it from this position. Who can see? Because you have to do it now. You can't do it. You can't see it here. So bishop takes rook, king takes rook, then what? And then you push the pawn, fork in the, the, fork in the king and the, and the bishop. Now, there are two different ways to do this. You have to think, think careful about what's the right move order. Because if you push the pawn first, what can the king do? So takes, takes, king's on g2. King, OK. Yeah, so push the, it, what, what does uh, white do after that? Uh, let me see. It takes. It takes. And then um, the knight checks them again. Wait a minute. Takes, uh, okay, so takes F G2. King takes G2, pawn F3 check. Can the, well, the, actually, yeah, we're not ready yet. White has two replies, which are decent. What can White do? Who can find that? The bishop. Think of defense for your opponent. The bishop. What? There's two moves. Yeah. Bishop. What? Bishop takes the pawn. Right. There's not enough firepower yet on F3 because we only have a rook. We have the rook guarding, and so as you can see, when with your with your rook F8 idea being flexible, isn't you wanted the rook lift before? Now you realize it's okay to go rook F8, but this is our justification. We want to push the pawn. Only though, after we get rid, we get more light square control. We need a little more light square control, which will happen after takes, takes. Oh, the other thing was he can, if you push, you can also decide to take the knight with the king. But yeah, bishop takes will be fine. What's the move now? Oh, uh, okay. Who sees it? It's gotta be knight takes bishop, right? Uh oh, it's, it stopped recording. Wait a second. Oh. <laughs> Ford. Oh no, it is recording. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it's going onto the cloud and not my phone because my phone doesn't have that much space on it it's an old phone but anyway uh same what happened what would happen king G maybe knight king. takes bishop followed by the pawn fork there it is. yep yep yeah nikki you're you seeing every tactic today huh yeah, <laughs> yeah all cool. the time <laughs> yeah it's you know some days we're just boom we're just on you know like yeah bishop. yeah yeah knight takes the bishop that's right. It takes Bishop. And then, yeah, like Lynn, I think it was you last week. You know, if, yeah, it's fine. But like certain weeks, just like, I see everything, right? Yeah, why can't we, what, what, how do you get more consistent? I don't know. Like some days, it's like I play like, you know, like complete garbage. And then some days it's like, you know, you're on, you're on. I know. One day you're on and one day you're not. Yeah. Right, right. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's like I'm streaky in tournaments too. Like, well, maybe it's because I have a bad game or something. I'm like, all right, I gotta get it, get it together, and then I am consistent after that. But you know what I do is I, I I wrote some blogs about it. Basically, I have the things that I need to work on written down, and I just remind myself of that. And I do it like kind of positive psychology approach, not just like don't blunder. But these are the things I need to do. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all positive. It's all pro. You know, being proactive and just and just getting those ingrained over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do become habitual and ingrained. But still, I, I forget those things sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I Where's your blog? You. Uh, I'm it's, it's not on the only one that forgets chess, those chess. things. <laughs> oh, on right. chess.com? Yeah, it's very easy to forget. Uh, yeah, no. I just remind myself yeah. of the basics. Uh, chess.com, yeah, I might use an L10 Adori on chess.com. 
but um okay. or probably just look up my name with chess blog it'll probably pop up but okay um uh, yeah i haven't really done anything i was doing a, i was doing a lot more blogging when i was kind of like moving toward the master title and i was like in that crucible you know just having the struggles there so you know all the it's the intense moment you know frustrations and victories you know so that was a good moment right so moment. david in this instance right here knight takes bishop queen takes knight Right. Queen takes, and then Nikki's move of F3, see? And then F3. So yeah. all, this is crazy. So ultimately what happens is, guess what the material is going to be? We equal. <laughs> After all is said and done, but we're going to have a superior end game. That's Look so funny. Game. Wait, wait. Actually, I think we probably have a pawn or something. What's a, I think because we had so many pawns. So I think it yields a, it yields a winning end game. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven. They have five. And White's pawns are trash, except for the two in the middle. Are we going to be up? Are we going to be up? Right. So we're going to give one back. We're going to up a pawn with superior structure and superior piece placement. So it's a winning end game. But it takes technique. But it's crazy, right? Sometimes now, now we can't. You don't. You can't necessarily say, "Oh, Tall saw this." I mean, it doesn't really matter. The point is, he went for his best way to attack. And it's either checkmate or it leads to something. You don't know exactly what's going to lead you. There are millions of possibilities in the last 10 moves, right? Depends what your depends how your opponent chooses to defend, depends what inspirations you have. You know, it's intuitive, right? It simply can't. I mean, who knows? Maybe you did, but now I doubt it because it wasn't like straightforward, boom, 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 boom. There's a Fisher game like that where you saw like 10 moves ahead and, and it ends up being a slightly better rook and pawn end game without any pawns up. But then there's the the um, if game of the century. Yeah, he calculated like, well, 17 half moves. Um, so like, well, like eight and a half moves, 17 half moves, he calculates ahead. It was crazy. One of my young students, like we were going through, he saw all the moves. Like, what? <laughs> no, because it went, well, what was it? Um, I forget. No, he, or no, we talked about it, but he visualized the entire thing. Like he knew exactly where everything was. Wow. Is that the one with the King's Gambit, the King's Gambit one? No, it's it's a uh, it's a um, it's a Grunfeld defense. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, just re just review the game and just Google game of the century. You can review it on chessgames.com or whatever. But yeah, it's from a, it's like an offbeat Grunfeld, and his opponent makes some weird moves to try to exploit this kid. He's like a fifty year old thinking he could crush the kid, but then he he was in. And I've learned I learned that lesson recently too. Watch out for those kids. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's the end of it. So, but in the Fisher game, he anticipated it all there. There's another game that I have under uh, transitions and end games, I think. Uh, and it's also defense, maybe. But it's like defending really hard positions. You kind of like just throw some throw some uh, some stuff at them, you know. Uh, they they have a big attack. Just throw the luxury of being up material is you can throw some back, throw it back in the fire. And then when he did so, he was able to just be like, okay, material's even now, but I'm winning because <laughs> I'm Fisher. But he saw that. Now, now I'm not saying Tall didn't calculate as deeply, but it's just there were too many things that could have happened, right? And as you saw, even in some of the lines, White could have been, White was better. So it didn't have to go that way, obviously. But it's just that he had a raging initiative and it was positional, it was intuitive, you know, long term attack, square control, active piece placement, right? Uh, and then he wins his material. He ca This is the moment, in other words, where he cashes in because he has to. I mean, otherwise he's just going to trade bishop for nothing and he can't trade too much. So he has to cash in. I suppose you could have a bishop takes e4 if he really didn't want it. But then the bishop, yeah, he hasn't, then the bishop moves. He's got to exploit the moment when there's a fork opportunity. Now, if the queen hadn't taken, he's probably going to get made. Oh, then f3 is, in f3 is just overwhelming. There's rook, there is rook a3. The queen just opted to take. I don't know, but did he have to? I guess so. He thought so. But if he doesn't do it, then there's a, well, then there's just a rook and uh, a knight for a queen. Actually, what it says black's up a point right now. So in any case, black's, wait, now he's getting a knight. Yeah, yeah, it's funny because now he, he's up a point, but then he gets a knight, a pawn, and a rook, which is which is the same material for the queen. And, uh, and that leaves black up a point again. Hmm. But in this end game. And interestingly, this is brilliant. He trades off the bishops. That I would I never expect. I would never expect that one. Yeah, yeah. But no, the other thing is he certainly could have played uh, rook down. That would be tempting, but it doesn't really do anything. Rook down, bishop just goes to, you know, h6 or something. Um, but this is he, nice. This is, the, this is where he secures the victory. Why is that such a strong move? Because he figures his pawn structure is better. So what? let's just get rid of everything. Yes, yeah. but it, yes, it's good fundamentally in that sense. 
uh, but but also there, this is a, a tactic. Oh. So either white takes or white guards. White guards the bishop, you trade bishop, no matter what you're trading bishop. So how is it tactical to trade bishops? What's gonna, we'll just visualize, we'll just, just go through the, so fundamentally, intuitively, again, you saw it's just good. Now let's look at a concrete line. So bishop takes, rook takes on f4, then what happens? Uh, you fork the pawns. It just ends up being a fork. And he resigns, because he's gonna be up two pawns again. <laughs> But wow. this time we've got two pawns without any other variables. So no, no, no uh, confounding variables there. Game over. Nice. Basically. Well, and then, and then that's, a, that's an example of overextension uh, from the Benoni. There's nothing to do. I mean, his pawns are just falling like ripe apples. So you go, you go here, if you want to save that pawn, you have two connected path pawns. Now you take this pawn. He's probably about to lose the D pawn. You can't hold the D pawn, right? Mm -hmm. I would probably go here. And if the rook decides to be sneaky and come in, <laughs> it actually doesn't matter. But you know what you can do? Seven. You can go here, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he can check. I don't know. Maybe maybe eventually you have to just give it up and let him come in. But so what? No, it doesn't matter. You know, you can do this if you want to, if you need to. You can, mm -hmm. you can go, you know, you can just play, you know, strategically, just bring your king. But even if you really want to cling on to the pawn, well, the thing is that the king can go to h5 later and take the h pawn or something. But no, you can certainly, no, no, you know, you, yeah, forget about it. Just do this. Just do this because this is this is just very straightforward. And then you can check him, and you're going to fork you're going to fork him if he goes up or down, and you're going to take one another pawn, and you'll be up like what three pawns? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's that looks pretty good. That's cool, right? Yeah. Up, check, take the a pawn. Well, down, check if he goes up. I guess from our perspective, check, take the b pawn. So that's why he resigned. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Just to see the transition, though, it's brilliant. I mean, there's so many things to learn. Well, first of all, the, the way he, he began the breaks, the way in which he intuitively kind of began this flash attack. What I mean is, you know, out of nowhere, right? It's like, wait, he's going to play B5 right now. His play is B5, right? And then suddenly he's going F5, F4, bishop check, queen in. That's a flash attack. That's what I would call a flash. It was like a flash flood coming in, right? Mm, so, like yeah, chess metaphors, right? Um yeah, but then he's so he's so bold. I mean, obviously this is a weaker player, probably like your, you know, run of the mill master or something against Tall. I've never heard of the guy, but yeah, he's like, I don't want to draw this guy. So even though it wasn't theoretically accurate or computer accurate, uh, but look, I mean, he's gained a lot in competition. When, again, he's down. He's down four points. That's pretty bold. It's like being down a, a rook for a queen, but in this case, it's more complicated than that because it's different types of pieces and pawns. And the fact that there's the pawn means that you can shove the pawn forward. Uh, and are there any more breaks? No, that's about it. No more pawn breaks, right? But uh, just winning pawns now. But what were the breaks? Let's review real quick. What were the breaks in this game? So we had C so again, C5, it's different. I mean, that's strike. I guess I call it just striking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not like you're breaking something. I, I view a break like once it's already locked up. I think so. Again, that's my understanding of it. I don't know. If you're, there's probably different definitions. There's levers and all that. Let's just strike it upon, right? Kind of a break. You strike. Now, when you play e6 and b5, those are what I would consider breaks because you break at something which is otherwise closed. You're trying to open it, right? But no, yeah, so it's hard to define, but I would say this b, e6 and b5 types of moves, those are breaks. And that's what I was talking about, the Alicon game. He did it, he, white played d5, but it's effectively the same thing because he's already striking at this. He takes takes and there's your, there's your Benoni. Take care, Leah. See you later. Have a good one. Yeah, that was interesting there. Okay, well then obviously we have our, uh, he's preparing for B5, which he never actually does. I don't think White ever got in a break at all. Then he goes for F5, which again, see, it's, it's what I'm saying, it's kind of hybrid. It's different, right? You're striking at a pawn, but it was never locked. So it's just showing different types of breaks, right? There's C5 and F5. And then there's the traditional, you know, uh, the traditional E6, striking at the well that's at the head of the chain right now we strike it somewhere in the middle of the pawn chain and it's risky for sure you know he moves the f pawn but he can't quite reach black not now and then he bypasses so his break because it's it's not accepted he ends it ends up just gaining space and squeezing white's position he sacks a piece but it works and he just keeps offering the, the knight and he didn't take the knight but he ended up taking the queen which was even more glorious right yeah yeah, and then we have, now we're done with breaks. Now we just, our breaks yielded this amazing situation. But hey, look look at that. It yielded that, that pawn 
right? That's what it yielded. It yielded the pawn on f4. And then he had from all the piece play. Piece play continues now. It's a, it gave him what he needed in terms of piece play and the past f pawn, which ultimately led to you know giving up those pieces, giving those pieces back and a better end game and then a nice little end game tactic. Oh, I wonder if this was a, maybe he should have played here. I don't know if it makes a difference. Probably, probably the king is going to be in trouble. I don't know. Just interesting. Probably has like h5 check. And if he comes forward, he's probably going to get mated or something. <laughs> Bishop f6 mate. Uh, and then he has to go back anyway. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's what would happen. And then, then he would go bishop here anyway. So it wouldn't really help him. Um, anyway. And then there we are. End game tactic. Game over. So you guys have any questions about that one? Nope. All right, final game. Final game in our multi-part series. So we have, we have, hold on a second. <laughs> okay. This is another tall game. Now there he, he likes the Benoni. And again, I, I don't know who this player is. It's just, you know, one of his tournament games. A brilliant game again. So there we go, same opening, uh, exact same thing. Uh, bishop d3, yep, same thing. I have three castles. A6 going for b5, does he, is he gonna go b6 again? No, he does not go b6, that's interesting. So this is where he, he kind of breaks that rule, uh, you know, unwritten rule about not letting him play a5. Unless you have like, sometimes you have a knight on c6, obviously it won't happen here. Then, they'll, you know, he can't play a5 then. If you can bring some attackers to bear on it. But now, but interestingly, now the knight d2c4 idea is not possible, right? Nick, if you take it. So it's a little less impactful, the a5 push, right? And keep in mind, when he does play a5, if it's not easily guarded, then that means the rook has to babysit the a5 pawn. Well, start of the queen has to, well, the queen might just hang out on c7. But you see, it's a little tricky, right? But at least the effect is, is mitigated by taking the knight. And the knight, and as we talked about Lynn's idea of e5, that's harder to achieve now. And um, that's why a lot of people like f4 these days. It's more aggressive. But you see, we, so we don't let knight c4 happen to guard the a5 pawn, look at b6, and we get more control over dark squares. Does that make sense? You'll see. Yeah. Take, take. See, we already have that, right? Now we have knight e5 coming. Now he did not bother to, again, if he plays a5 without knight d2 to c4, you can see that a5 is sort of, it's, it's a little dubious. I mean, I guess he has like bishop d2 and he can hope to hold that, but then it's really just fine. You don't play b5, you don't get that in, but it's not a huge deal. And he can't go like knight a4, for example, to come into b6. Well, you can't, knight's covering. But if you want knight a4, you have to go queen takes a5. So it's not that easy. And now we have knight e5 ideas in the air. So he goes back, she goes back, queen c7. Okay, rook at the a. There's your knight e5. Now we're still going to get, a, let's see where he gets his play here beyond knight e5. Queen a5, sort of we're not really pinning it, but putting some pressure there. Gonna go to b4 as well. Look at that. Now you're you're beginning to exploit those weak squares, right? Hang out with your queen in there. You're looking at b2, e4, and you see e4 is under some real heat, right? Got yeah. some heat, c4, and a4, yeah. A4 matters too, because if the rook can't can't easily move, you might have some tactical possibility. So he's starting to tie him down. Kind of funny, remember the knight before move didn't do as much, but that queen before move is pretty strong. Centralizing calmly tucks back. Now we have a threat though. Just want to take e4. Hey, maybe we're gonna knight b6. You never know. We really want the a pawn. There you go. There's your b5. Hold on one sec. Okay. All right. So we got mm -hmm. So B5. Now this, it seems that, is it a sacrifice? He doesn't take. So and interesting, we only have the queen and the pawn guarding and they have a knight, a, a bishop and a pawn. So it seems that they could just take it and win it, but there obviously there's a reason that he did it and that um, Mitatulu or um, Gior Georgie didn't do it. Why do you think he didn't take that? Let's, let's take a look. What do you think? Does he just take back or what? Is it just bishop and the knight both guarding it? Yeah, like maybe he right. just wings slides his rook over or something, tries to get like the B file or 
I don't know. That's one idea. And, and uh, it's like a banco, right? Well, there's a break, like a banco break, right? No, no, rather, no, my bad. That would be after C4, but uh, C4, B5 striking. So now it's a strike against the A pawn, right? But it's a bid for activity, right? Now, okay, let's say he takes. Let's look at our options. Now, keep in mind, there's a common theme of playing C4 in a, in a Benoni. So C4, oh. five, that, that's probably what he has in mind. One of the oh, things. Oh, yeah, that oh, would be there nice. You go, there you go. You see, tactically, it actually is fine for him. So mm -hmm. he doesn't have to win the pawn. You see what I'm talking about? So if you go C4, and then he goes bishop C2, for example, what can you do next? You could play knight C5, actually. Oh yeah, no! By the way, by the way, the e no. By the way, the e the e pawn is more, more is relevant right now. So you'd probably have to go to c two or b one to keep an eye on that. With because we have three: the knight, the rook, and the queen. That I love that queen working on b four laterally. That's really cool. Supports the push, hits the b two pawn, hits e four. So probably they would go like maybe uh, here, and then we could simply do what if we want to take back. Yeah, just take back. Oh, actually, bishop c two might even fail to queen takes b two if we want, or just take back. But of course, they would probably go here this time. And you get the pawn back, and that's just great. I think he might have gotten that. Yeah, I think he gets this in anyway. Um, but yeah, now you have an IC5 ideas. We're just going to pound that e4 pawn. You have knight e4 to b3 stuff. Hey, I mean, in this case, you might even have a rook down here in a1. So no matter what stuff's coming in, we're getting at him one way or the other, right? Pretty tough. So he hits him with, uh, he doesn't take, he goes here. It's a c4 and pretty similar anyway. And now he wants to play B4, it looks like. Why not? So she's like, all right, I've done my job here. I'm blocked laterally anyway. So we can reroute the queen. And in doing so, we can play. Well, actually, he's sort of threatening to win. Not yet, not yet. But in some cases, no, you can't go B4, B3 because the queen would hang. But in some, if the queen's not there, B4, B3, and then take the A4 pawn. I mean, why not, right? Because then you have those pawns rushing like A5, A4. If you're able to win the B pawn, why not take it? You can go B4, Knight, C5, actually. And, and if she took B2, she would get trapped, right? If what? If oh, she right took, now. yeah. Oh, she... that's probably. Wait, I didn't look at that. Does she get trapped? Well, at the very least, uh, they're gonna get the B pawn back. She can go to yeah. A three, I guess. She might still get trapped. Let's see. There's a little trickiness there with the C knight being loose too. I don't think she's getting trapped because she has an escape hatch. Bishop mm -hmm. E three tries to mimic tries to stop it, but I, I don't think that works. No, I doubt that works. And then you go here, threaten, take on C three, escape with the queen. Knight has to run. Thanks. I think why I think. The, yeah, I think I think they're okay. Now we can do that move that we want. Oh, the bishop's trapped and the apon's falling. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> actually, it's fine. Nothing to do. And um, yeah, there's just no way to attack it because the. Okay, fine, fine. Let's let's give them a little bit of, of help. So now the rook can go to a one. Um, I mean, we have too many things to do. I I think we play b three again, though. No? no, then rook a one happens. No, check this out though. Does this work? Oh, queen b two again. So knight takes e4, rook takes e4. <laughs> you can do that. Queen where? Queen b2, right back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easier. Wait. Right. Well, no, they're not trapped. Oh, they are trapped because they can't go to the back rank because you take the rook. <laughs> yeah, that works too. I was I was getting fancier with this move. That probably works too. Oh, that's not, that's, yeah. No, I don't like this as much though. Oh, no, that totally works. because Yeah, it works. You're going to get that, yeah. And you have the pawns coming. Yeah, you have two. I mean, you have two connected pass pawns extra coming. So both are winning. Uh, that's pretty cool. So what happened? Um, yeah, that's what he wants, you know. So finally, f4 comes, but it's too little, too late to get e5 in. But keep in mind, because of what he did on f3, that break is really hard to achieve. But like I said, this is the one where White gets his breaks, though. Right? White does get a fair share of breaks in. You get a break. Now we just pawn. Now, now because of our space, we get our pawn storm. Queenside majority coming, right? Guards that. Wants to trade queens, says no. I mean, again, you can imagine, you know, uh, the end game's nice with those pawns coming. Okay, look at that queen. She just doesn't stop. Yeah, she's just oh, jumping all around. What's that? She's just jumping all around. Yeah, b4, a5, b6, I see five, b4. Back again. I guess he has a new idea. Or maybe he, no, no, White has a new idea, Bishop F2. <laughs> you have to watch out. Maybe there's, well, she's like, nah, mess with that. Mm -hmm. And then remember, though, there's always this idea, if you want the A pawn, I mean, B, that's, that's not irrelevant, you know? B3, kick the bishop, and then you go rook B4 or queen over, take the mm -hmm. A pawn, and then you can try to win just by shoving your A pawn down the board and, like, trade it off, two can pass pawns, 
especially in an end game. That's just a set for a winning end game, right? So the, the burden's really on White here. The onus is on him to try to survive that, you know, try to counterattack or else he loses. Okay, we want the pawn there. And that's exactly what he does. And no, but now he has a new idea. So you see, he's playing across the board. There was just too much. I mean, the funny thing is he could have taken the A pawn, but now he takes this. So we already saw that move. Why does he take the D pawn? Like that. It's the fancy pants thing that he's doing here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, but it's just kind of, you know, and again, he didn't, of course, you know, you're not going to calculate this. No one's going to, no one's going to calculate like what's going to happen right now because you just don't know what white's going to do they could play knight f2 knight e3 rook f3 you know you just don't know what they're going to do but as it turns out you know you decide to kind of see you're flexible it's like okay never mind i'm going to come back but then it just like you know things just happen because you tactics flow from a superior position then he kicks the bishop back now he has things like you know the a pawn could fall but but the thing is that that's that's bad now that's probably bad because look white wants that e5 break you have to address that otherwise you could be in big trouble now so he hits him with this. He messes up his center. But but not only that, white can't even white shouldn't even take back. Why not? There's some kind of like discovery on the bishop. No, the rook. The rook will yeah. capture the rook. Yeah, it take the rook because the rook opens up against the rook, and the queen's already looking at the rook. And you can't go bishop c3. Bishop knight just takes it. Oh, takes back, okay. Takes, wins the exchange. Oh, and, I didn't and see that. In. Yeah. And we see how quickly this overextension can be punished, right? Yeah. Interestingly, nice. I, I think he might even be able to take a deep pawn again. I mean, this is this is just win, right? <laughs> uh, but I think you might be able to take it again if you want to. I wouldn't. I don't know. I feel see, it feels a little sketchy to me. Um, but you you probably could if you really really wanted to. What if no, you took no, no, the no, other one with check? It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore because it only worked when the uh, when the bishop was obstructing. Like if they do this, then it works. Then they lose the bishop too. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, Nikki, what were you saying? You saw that? I just, no, I was just thinking like knight takes g4 check, but I don't think so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. No, for sure. Wait, there's a lot of lines here. Okay, check. No, yeah, yeah. You could do it right now. Absolutely. Now you're seeing it. Whichever way they take, you get this. And then we're coming. Yeah, that's easy. And then rook comes in. And again, in all these lines, he keeps on getting extra pawns. They, they're nice because they start moving forward to uh, create queening threats, just end game insurance. You say no matter what, no matter what you're going to have a good end game, yeah, it's end game insurance. There with the I like that end game insurance. <laughs> yeah, well, he, a, I like the way he keeps that bishop on d4 because he did it in his other game too, which restricted the king a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same thing, exactly. So Nikki, let's make that happen. Let's sack that, yeah. Uh, wait, what about here? I don't know, it doesn't matter because it's all winning, but like, yeah, then you have this move, like rookie two check and all that, a lot of pressure. And that bishop, the knight's pinned, the bishop on b1 could fall in a lot of lines too. I mean, he can cover, he can he can cover f2, but I mean, he, he's just dangling by a thread at that point. Right? Um, so yeah, he doesn't take, right? He goes here. But notice by taking this, you mitigate any effect of like an e5 push. Because imagine if you have then then we're looking like the Alakine game with you know d e5 and the d5 pawn and the f pawn coming. But he mitigates that, and that that's where look, White gets a break. This is a good example of defending against breaks. Bypass another break, lock it up. Nice. Pretty much stops it. Not only that, but now he has which square can Black exploit now. Now that he's locked up the pawns on the king side, which square can block use here? First piece activity, think about that. F four. Yep, there you go again. <laughs> Not <laughs> f four. All right, can't do much about it. It's probably in his next move. Huh? Yeah, I was thinking he would take that pawn and like maybe try to slide his guys over, but I guess he can't. He doesn't have time. Uh, for white. Yeah. Well, the other thing about this position is that your knight covers uh, h7 and your bishop covers h8. Yeah. And he just, you know, taking the steam out of it, taking the wind out of his sails here, you know? What I write here, I, I haven't looked at this for a while. Weak square equals excellent outpost, very, of course. Yeah, so that's some, well, as you look at it, you see there's some, some comments. Oh, I, yeah, I did a lot of analysis. I don't know if I analyzed all of them. I think I did more on this one. And then, the positional sack one had some cool games. I don't think I analyzed them. I think I put like, you know, notes here and there. Or some sometimes I can maybe 
pull an analysis that's already been done like on chessgames.com by a GM or something. But I think for the most part, I just can just to an analyze myself. So queen before, there you go again. Oh, that reminds me of uh, with the Nepognacci game where he's all in the fourth rank. Okay, queen c3, not the world championship like a couple years ago. Takes, takes, oh, wow. Uh, that's over, that's just disgusting, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> let's see i would almost let's see i mean you can't resign just yet wait one two three four five yeah there he is again he still has an extra pawn yeah that's i mean it's ugly but you, you you're only down a pawn you have to fight on a little bit yeah and you have stuff like this takes now we have a pass pawn check good thing about the check is you can't come over attack so you don't have time to get this and now i love it i love this don't look at it wait can you guys see the move or not don't look at the bottom. You guys see the move or not? Not looking. Um, okay. Now this is just nice. This is this is good technique right here. I mean, yeah, yeah. You kind of have them in a mating net too, but just keep it simple here. You know what White wants. Don't let him do it. Just simply <laughs> F six or something, or move your yeah, king you up. Go. Yeah, Nikki is oh. just you know. You just, yeah, today's my day. You well, but you may as well just like teach this client. This this because <laughs> you already you already see everything. <laughs> uh, <it's the> last <laughs> Uh, yeah, just play f6. Okay, you give them d6, though. Pros and cons, but, like, you'd rather give them that than, well, otherwise, think about it. If you lose the g-pawn, then you lose this coordination among your, and you love that I don't have four. You lose the g-pawn, you might not, be, you're not going to be able to keep that outpost, right? I don't think so. And then you might need that knight to support your other knight, like, wrapping to h3. You don't want to lose the knight on f2. You can go to d3 or something, but, yeah, you don't even want to give that thing up for the bishop. But we are, wait, we're still up the pawn. No, no, we're giving him a pawn back. Equal pawns now. Equal pawns, amazing. But farce, I mean, but look at his position. Locked it in. Now we can maybe get hit with e5. Yeah, oh, look at that, another break. How many yeah. breaks do we have? Okay, we take the pawn, which was the result of our bypassing and locking him up, fixing the pawn in g4. Okay, he has to try again. One more break. We can finish this off. Now we have a fork. We need to try something desperate here. Gives him an exchange. That's a check. Look at that, though. You got to deal with some renegade pawns in here. <laughs> okay, he's now he's trying. Pawns at him. Is he trying some some mating theme? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, amazing. Do not get greedy to take and take the knight. I said let's Ooh. maybe take the e pawn. You take the e pawn. Nope. He goes. Oh, he finds another way around. Nice. That that finishes it. You could probably take the epon, but then we have more work to do. He goes knight f2 to kick the rook out, and he gets what he wants, right? But why? So that allows him to take if he wants to, right? Why shouldn't he take the knight right now? What's what's White's very strong move? Does he just move his king or something? Well, you want the knight actually? Oh, oh, my bad. I mean, for White, yeah. You take uh, h, you take h five. What does white do with his king? Hmm. Like I don't want to ruin my streak, so somebody else get the answer. No, you're, I'm sure you'll find it too, but who else can find it? King takes h five. King this is takes h five. Rook to h eight. No, for no, yeah, yeah. No, white, king, no black. No, I'm, that, I'm sorry. Has, this is white to move. White has something nice. Okay, up. white to move. Because he's in um, a he's in a net right now, right? He can't go to g five. He can't go to g six. On the edge file, where 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 does white where does white go? Probably just push one of those pawns. <laughs> <laughs> Better, yeah, that's what he has there. I mean, look, I mean, he look, he played rook h one. He's not just being cheeky with that rook right there. He has very uh, concrete idea with rook h one. After okay, rook after h1. Watch, the kings on kings on h five, then what? Uh, yeah, King. Um, I'm not gonna okay, say. Nikki, don't, Nikki, don't feel bad if you get all them right. That's okay. Okay, King to three. <laughs> okay. What is it? Right. Uh, let's King, see. King G three. Yeah, King G three mate. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. King move mates are always fun. You guys see it now? Because the king, when it comes forward, it creates, uh, it finishes the mating net. It shoulders out. You got that force field around him. 
shoulders out the black king and then, so we didn't lynn we didn't even have to move the f pawn. leave it there. right you know what and i saw that but I, that's where my confidence level comes in i was telling you about yeah, yeah. I, I saw that but i'm like mm, then i'm looking at something else so that's good nikki no well, i would have thought the pawn push too the same thing that, that was the same mentality you had nikki right yep because you were like i don't want to ruin my streak yep same thing okay. You both Same it. thing. We got to work on our confidence, Lynn. Well, right. Be confident but cautious. Confident but cautious. Confident yeah. but cautious. I'm going to write it down. But verify yourself. Okay. Right? As much as you can. But then, well, now this because he knows that White has some some swagger over here with the kingmate. He just goes not up too. And also yeah, the discovery. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's game. He probably resigned. Did he resign? No, I think I don't know if I. Yeah, I'll check. But that's oops. No, he goes on, huh? But this this looks pretty bad because he he pulls the rook away. He might even have a knight check and take the knight if it's not too dangerous. But now, oh wait, no no no, he still has the same thing. So if you go if you go for the oh that's cool, he's just trading. Look, if you do the knight check thinking you're being being uh, you know taking away the possibility, and then you're like oh I could take it now. No, he does the same thing, ah. and then he mates like that. Oh no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can still fall. You could still fall for it. Unless he goes here. Well, then you fork him and then you take everything. But yeah, that's crazy. It still works. It, but see, it's more disguised now. Because mm -hmm. the ring's not there anymore in your night's out. But no, it's the exact. Don't, don't blunder. Don't blunder that. That's me. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell myself. Don't mess this up, Nikki. Don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah, because, because this, is, this is where you become like, oh, yeah. This is where you can like just take a break. And just be like, oh, I got this, you know, I got this. But then, no, you can know, never say that, David. <laughs> no, no, I never said that. No, no, now like, not sure, you can now. never say that. That's good. That's good because a lot of people. No, I do that myself. Some of them think like, huh, it's gonna be nice when I win this game. Yeah, you know, you start thinking about your victory, then you then it gets taken away from you, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you your lunch, your lunch yeah. and stuff. No, you have to just keep. You got to be a warrior when you're on the board. Uh, but yeah, look, so he drops the rook down. Well, here's the problem uh if you take the knight you just take the bishop and push game over so because you can play b2 your rook guards b2 and then you just move your rook away with the check or just move it and you get a queen so game over but at least black can be white can be like oh i have those two connected pass pawns like you said like you said man push the pawns comes back again here i can am again so now we are up just an exchange but we're going to get that bishop at least at the same time, those are kind of scary pawns. Yeah, you know? I was you just going to say, those pawns look really scary. Yeah, you can't take yeah. that lightly. You can't take that. We got to show our technique first. Ah, we drive him. We're getting there. So that's the thing. He doesn't pure. I mean, he probably could just defend. and But then you're going to get hit by like some, you know, he's going to go E5, E6, E7, and queen and win your mm -hmm. pawn. Right? And then maybe you push and you win his bishop. Okay, maybe you have like a pawn up, but like he trades down and he holds or something. Who knows? Um, uh, I, I don't have 30, all the more moves or something. Me I, I don't have then. all the technique to do all of that. So that's why I probably would go ahead and push the pawns and get me a queen. Then I can have better technique. <laughs> yeah, but he no, that's kind of what he does. But it's just like, hey, look, forget about the white, forget about white pawns. Let's just attack the bishop because we know now that the bishop's gonna be driven away. And maybe I feel like he's got to resign. When is he going? check a little little finesse i guess oh because now when he gets the queen you're, uh, you're already you're already in your mating then he was on finally <laughs> but now um yeah now you can play e6 and queen and then mates coming from behind i mean it probably doesn't matter i don't think it matters you can push right away but no i don't know it's just like there's no question right now there's no question right, okay uh i mean i don't even think about it too much and something like this and where is our checkmate? Two coming. Uh, we don't want to let him run to e3 if we go like this. So you just go like this and just pull him over. You guys see him mating two? Yeah, that's about it. Because you know he wants to go to eight. You got to be prepared for him going to h. No, sorry, there's a mate in one. Because you know he wants to go to h3. So I was thinking, uh, I was looking at, you know, this thematic mate at first, like this is fine. But there's actually a mate in one. Because again, the point is you have to catch him on h3 or stop him from going to h3. So how would you do that? Uh, queen to g2. 
Correct, Queen G2. Nice. And, you that. and Lynn, you were on some of them, you saw it or you didn't say it. This time you saw it and you finished, we'll finish with you getting the answer right. So nice job, nice job. Now you guys are doing great. And I mean, not that you have to get all the answers. No, but no matter what, even if you get it wrong, you're getting, you're closer to getting it right. Or quote, wrong, even right? if you I get mean, it you, wrong, you, you, you you're learning how to get it right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But you're learning it, but but and fundamentally, you're you are mathematically getting closer to getting it right. Well, well, one, you yeah, there are fewer wrong or fewer wrong answers to choose from. Like if you have a five question multiple uh, choice test, but also yeah, you, but you start realizing oh that doesn't work because he gets to age three. So then you're you're getting closer in that sense too. Like okay, I need to focus on taking away age three. Uh, yeah, and just learning in general, You'll, it'll probably stick more, especially if you lose a game because of the mistake. Would probably stick for sure if that happens yeah. um but yeah so so just you know once again striking is multiple strikes but i like this is cool because we're just bom bombs away both sides just <laughs> throwing pawns at each other left and right literally lots of chucking pawns yes the chucking pawns right <laughs> so we have let's see where we so we had the opening stuff and then we had uh the b5 right and then we had well just like the natural storm now we have white trying to go e5 or f5 I've seen a nice win by someone who went e5. The idea was like e5. He took, then he went for f5. So you have stuff like that as well. Um, and then we have that was here. We already have over a lot of overextension by white, and he just starts picking apart his position. But there is one little hope here. He's trying to get his e5 in, and then it would be strong, most likely. At least he would get, it would get white's att black's attention for sure. Okay, now not a break. We already have what we need break wise, but there could be breaks like C3 later. Does not give in to the A pawn stuff. Like I said, he can take the A pawn if he wants, but he doesn't give in to that because he knows, uh oh, you guys still there? Oh, I think I went into power saving mode and it went away. That's you guys okay. Still there? <laughs> anyway, he knew that uh, he, he didn't need that. And he knew that there's a lot of counterplay on the. Um, uh, on you know the king side with f5 and e5 so like let's just get rid of that d pawn and even though that's not on the king side that would bolster his attack remember just like the alicon game where he had the pawns locked up and when he pushed that pawn like the one i showed you where if the e pawn had taken and we have those two pawns steamrolling the center mm -hmm. if he had allowed that that wouldn't weigh too strong and again we saw that annoyance in georgie's whatever uh, uh game against tall he had those two pawns coming but it was too little too late now if alicon had done that it was not too late at all because it's just gonna bolster his attack and like battering rams and pieces flowing in behind it right so it's about how it's done but the point is by removing the deep on you 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 took the the sting out of that break a little bit but yeah lots of breaks across the board so yeah pretty pretty cool games and i'm glad you guys seem that you comprehended it all pretty well you guys have any any uh, how do you think uh it's a great you, lesson i mean this was a great whole series about the pawn breaks i feel like um i think we all benefited from it Yes, I did uh, very much, um, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Because, yeah, you know, I, it made me realize that you don't always have to take y'all the time, you know, right. you can just stop passing and, and, and advance your pawn. So, yeah, that was very good, David. You know, four, four you series. When do you push? When do you bypass? When do you take? When do you let them take? You know the options there. You got your multiple choice test there every time. You got to time it right. You got to know what your point. You got to think about that. Hey, they might bypass me. They might ignore me. What am I going to do in each of those cases? Should I do it yet then because of those possibilities? And, and what were you saying then? Mr. Open no, that no, no, no. I'm just saying that all the, like Nikki said, all of the series were excellent. And I thank you. Uh, I learned something from each one of them. Glad you and glad you did. Uh, and we got the videos and we have the the study. And I think I, was, I put the study in most of the videos, I think, too. So, yeah. So if you look at it like in a year or two, you can go back to the study at least and just like flip through the games. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Or, like, say a pawn break comes out. Like, wait, what did, what did Tall do? What did Alakine do? What did Fisher do? You know, mm -hmm. so you can go back and just remind yourself and compare that against your own games. So cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Nice work, guys. All right. Thank All right. you so Thanks much. For David. We really appreciate it. I'm and gonna go. Well, if you have ideas for a new series, remember I won't be here. Feel next free to email week. me. No. Me if you have ideas for a next one. Oh, what's that one? No, I said remember I won't be here next week. Where are oh, you going? Okay. You next week. Oh, I'm going good. to Boston. Oh, nice. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. Oh, you weren't have here. Good trip. Yeah, I'm going enjoy. for a family reunion. 
So let me know. Well, maybe when you come back, when if you have any ideas, email me or let me know if you guys have anything off the top of your head, any uh, future topics. Uh, you have any, any ideas for topics you want to do? Okay, cool. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll think of some stuff too. I can yeah, okay. shoot me an email if you have anything so I can yeah, so well, mull it over. Request, like song requests, right? We'll play those. All right, you, guys. David, see you next you week slash in so two weeks. Much. You've covered so much yeah. over this time that I've been with you. And I've learned so much. Yeah. Over this. And, and, and John, I just want you to say that I play that grob. <laughs> <laughs> It's, How did it work, it's, out? It's, How did it work um, out for you? Well, actually, I checkmated the computer at one point, but then I, I lost again. But um, because it has, it, you know, you bring the queen out first, but and you think that's going to be your strength, but it can have some drawbacks on it, you know. Well, um, it's cutting it. it. It's definitely double edged, but it's fun. Grows your opponent yeah. It, it's a fun game to play because you know when I after I check I feel like yes, I'm not playing <laughs> <all> day. <laughs> yeah, you can throw them off. Definitely throw them off, and and, and you uh, will master. That'll be your pet variation, just like Claude uh, Bloodgood. Bloodgood, right? Interesting name, isn't it? But just like Claude Bloodgood. He mastered that thing in the prisons, and he just like crushed a lot of people. He was, I mean, he had plenty of time, just like work on his theory. He probably spent uh, so many uh -huh. hours just theorizing, and probably it, it's a very aggressive. It. It's a very aggressive opening, and I like that. The grub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the grub. It's it's. Uh, I don't think too many professionals are playing it right now. No, but it doesn't matter. It's like a club level. It's like a club level opening, or. If you are, uh, if, if you are, who was it? Ilman John or something? The president of FIDE, which whatever his name was, I butchered it. I think from Kazakhstan, where they had like that chess city they created, like Kalmykia and all that. But he had some corruption issues and mm -hmm. you know, getting booted. You know, it was in there for a while. Um, but anyway, something he, with yeah, Fiji water too, right? What's that? Did he have something to do with Fiji water? Or am I getting confused? I think you might be right. Yeah, I think. Well, okay, you have to start like, random. Uh, Sorry. A lot of interesting chess stories. Yes, in saga, but but uh, yeah. So so he made the the first move. I think it was him for uh, Karpov against Susan Polgar or Judah. Pol maybe yeah, I think it was Susan Polgar. And then he plays G four in the first move, and Karpov's like whatever. He ended up winning, but yeah. I think he had a, I think he had a rough time. It'd be actually interesting to find that game. You look it up. Karpov versus. Karpov plays the grob. I mean, it's a great joke because obviously Karpov would never play the grob. <laughs> That'd be the last move because he's so solid. He'd play, you know, any solid move before that. All right, guys. Well, nice work. I'll see you next right. week. Thank you so All much, right. David. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Have a great trip, Lynn. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Matt. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.